G'day, it's Chris Betcher here. I want to take you through a new feature in Google Meet that was just released by Google that addresses a lot of the concerns that educators had about using Meet with their students. So Meet is Google's video conferencing tool uh, that lets students communicate together in um, multi-person video calls, uh, up to 100 people in a meeting using the standard uh, Meet feature, or 250 if you've got the premium edition, which by the way is free for schools now until the end of September. The concern with using Meet has been, and this comes from the fact that Meet was always designed for the enterprise space, not necessarily the education space, uh, is that meeting rooms uh, were persistent. In other words, they lasted forever. Uh, now, in the enterprise, that's not a bad thing. It means you can set up a space that teams can use to work together. But in a school situation, it's not ideal because it means that students can wander into these spaces unsupervised or stay after a teacher leaves a meeting and remain unsupervised. Either way, it's not, it wasn't a good idea to have these meeting spaces that students could stay in without a teacher there. Today's update from Google addresses that by making these meetings non-persistent and also integrating with Google Classroom. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so here we are inside Google Classroom. You can see I've got this set up so the teacher's view is on the left-hand side of the screen and the student view of the same classroom is over here on the right-hand side. And the first thing you're going to want to do to use this new integration between Meet and Classroom is to turn it on. So as a teacher, I'll go to the settings by clicking on the cogwheel, scroll down, and you'll notice there's a section in here now for Meet. And there's a URL there that is generated. And this is a special URL that's a little bit different to the normal ones that you would encounter with Google Meet. Um, this one generates a brand new URL for every session. So at the end of a session, it disappears. And the next time you click on it, it generates a brand new session. So you can choose to make this visible to students, which I'll do there, and just hit Save. And what that does is it puts this link right here on the front page of the page. You notice it's not on the student page yet, but it will appear there in a couple of seconds. Also, if I go to the classwork page over here, you'll notice there's now a button at the top of the section here that says Meet. And whether you click this Meet button or whether you go to the stream and click that Meet button doesn't really make any difference. They both go to exactly the same place. And over here on the student page, any second now, you'll see that will appear. There you go, it just popped up. So it's there and also on the classwork page, the button is also there as well. Doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, so let's just do a little experiment first. As the student, I'm gonna come over to this side and click on this link to start a brand new meet. And you'll notice what it does, first of all, it tries to create one and then says, oh, that meeting code you entered doesn't work. Okay, so I can't use that. I can't actually start a meeting on my own as a student. All right, what happens when the teacher starts a meeting? If the teacher clicks on this and it goes into this creation of a brand new Meet session. And I wanna point out a very important thing that this Meet session, as soon as I get to this page, is now live. If a student were to join right now, they would get in because this session exists, even though the teacher hasn't actually joined the meeting yet. So my advice to you as a teacher is as soon as you start the session, join the session, okay? Now what's actually happened in the background is it's generated this unique code. And every time it does a new session, it generates a new unique code. And that's how we solve the problem of uh, these non-persistent sessions. Now when a student tries to enter that same room, you'll notice that they can. They get the same session code, they join, and now they're both in there. Now you've seen both of me because I'm using one computer to record both of these. Uh, now if the student hangs up, and the teacher hangs up. There is about a 25 to 30 second delay between the time the last person leaves the meeting to the time the meeting actually vanishes. Okay, so if the student was to go back in within this 25 second period, they could potentially get back into that room. So you wanna wait about 25 seconds. And if you need to pop back into the room just to check that those students have gone back in, you can do that. But the room will become non-valid after about 25 seconds. So if a student tries to rejoin this now, you'll see they get a code saying the meeting code you entered doesn't work, okay? If they try and go back to the main page here and join that session again, they'll get a code, uh, they get a message saying the meeting code you entered doesn't work. So once that session is ended, let me just close this. Once this session is ended, the student can't enter it until the teacher creates a brand new session like so. And as soon as the teacher creates another session, this is now a different session with a different unique code, the student can now join that meeting by clicking on that link 
and the student can now get into that second meeting. But each of these sessions are unique and once the student leaves them, the session closes down again after about 25 seconds or so. So just be aware of that, that, that little time frame at the end. But that should solve the problem that you've been having with students wandering in and out of Google Meet unsupervised. Now I do want to add one little caveat to this and that is this needs to be set up properly in the back end in the administration console to make sure this behaves the way you expect it to behave. So I'm here in the administration console in the G Suite settings and you'll notice I have all the G Suite uh, modules here, all the different apps within G Suite. And if I go in and click on this one called Google Hangouts, it'll take me into the settings for Google Hangouts, soon to be renamed Google Meet by the way. And you'll see these are the settings for Meet. So if I open this up by clicking on that little arrow, it will open up the settings for Meet. Now, very important when you set this up as the administrator, you have your organizational units in place. So you can see right now here, I've got an OU for staff and one for students, because clearly I want staff to have very different privileges to what I want students to have. So if I click on staff, for example, you'll notice this is what's on. So recording is on, a teacher can record a meeting. The stream is on, teachers can start a stream and stream it to, um, to the internet. The video calling is on, teachers can place video calls. Okay, those settings should be on for teachers, assuming you want them to do that. However, for students, you want those settings to be off. You want to turn this off so students can't initiate video calls. That only They can only join calls the teacher makes. You also probably don't want the students recording meetings or streaming meetings, although I guess it's entirely up to you what you allow or not allow. The only other setting you might like to think about here for students is this default video quality. If you're in a school that's operating on limited bandwidth, uh, you might like to go into this section and actually turn on this limited video bandwidth. If you don't turn that on, then Meet will try and automatically adjust and use whatever bandwidth it can find to, to make the meeting call the quality as good as possible. Now, uh, if it detects that there's a bandwidth drop, it will actually drop the quality of the call to compensate for it. But you can actually force limited bandwidth here if you want to do that. The other thing you might like to think about here is to turn on audio only. If you turn this on, then the user's camera is turned off by default. Now that doesn't mean it's turned off permanently, it simply means when the user enters the room, they'll be in audio only mode, their camera will be off. You may or may not want that. Some teachers definitely want to see their kids. Other teachers don't want all the video going. So you can decide which it is you want by changing those settings. And those are the settings you should think about to make sure Google Meet behaves the way you want it to in your context.